Hey, I'm Dan Winter, as you know, fractalfield.com, therify.net. And we're here today to discuss if you learn the electrical engineering of Stargate's portals, then you will know how wireless power, zero-point energy, and your mind work. <laughs> and the major article about this is fractalfield.com slash conjugate mind. Also, our 3 million view YouTube channel, youtube.com slash danwinterfractalfield. So what we're, the background here is, you know, we have been talking about the fact that the compressional component of the electromagnetic wave called longitudinal EMF, sometimes incorrectly called scalar, is in fact the component which uh, Tom Bearden had elaborately shown is not just the stuff of gravity waves, but the stuff which triggers biology, gravitobiology, literally why seeds germinate when that field is centripetal. <laughs> it's funny, our friend is now writing astrological predictions, describing astrological alignment sites or places as coherent longitudinal nodes. The language is catching on, and that is a good thing. The, the background here is there are so many people trying to teach what stargates and portals are, and now we have friends who are trying to teach what Atlantean fire crystals are. And sadly, the level of electrical engineering skill in those who are pretending to teach these things is shockingly bad. And that's a problem because you know, we remain woo-woos and numerologists until <laughs> we have serious electrical engineering skill and we understand the principle behind these things. Today's presentation was also prepared in our long-term collaboration with Teresa Burns, who's doing work on um, John Dee's hieroglyphic monad recently, in which she's describing the principle behind the hieroglyphic monad as the implosion of double cones, literally. And we see here from Darlene's famous drawings of uh, conic sections of a double vortex actually then becoming the, the geometric parts of ancient angel alphabets, actually the Ophanum alphabet, which later became the movie Stargate. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> so if you take the double vortex and take pieces out of that vortex in order to learn the angle of that vortex, not only do you have the elements of angel alphabets, which is how giant intelligent plasma fields become self-aware when they're centripetal with the right symmetry elements. That's what angel alphabets are. So we're, we're playing with this conversation with um, Teresa Burns, who's doing this wonderful work on, on John Dee. Remember that... Um, you know, Vincent Bridges thought that I had past life connections with John Dee, and there certainly are fragments of soul memory. The point is, as I meditate on my own past in this regard and see that the major yearnings behind what John Dee was pursuing is in fact indirectly or maybe directly uh, related to the deep urges of my own uh, spiritual and intellectual pursuits. For example, the hieroglyphic monad, which... Uh, we have the picture here. This is this is the hieroglyphic monad from John D. And note that the uh, the slices of the vortex cone, whose then symmetry elements of those slices became Ophanum and Okian angel alphabets. Golden mean dot info slash Ophanum. And on uh, um, Teresa is very exquisitely pointing out that. On the, uh, the glyph, which was the hieroglyphic monad, which is the universal symbol for everything sacred, according to John Dee, but on the glyph was actually an in implication of the study of parabolas. And it's very interesting that if the reflection angle to the center of the parabola is correct, you have a potential fusion implosion point in the parabola. And that becomes more and more profound as today's lesson proceeds. So the study of conic sections, the key to charge collapse. Remember, we are saying Planckfire.com, P-L-A-N-C-K-P-H-I-R-E, Planck times powers of golden ratio, is the key to charge collapse and therefore the key to all neg entropy, all self-organization, the key to the nature of mind, because mind, we know, is centripetal electrically. That's well measured. It is key to the na uh, nature of electrogravitics. It's key to the nature of black holes. It's the key to what makes 
uh, seeds germinate because they require a centripetal field. So all these keys are based on the pure physics of charge collapse, which conventional scientists pretty much agree is the cause and mechanisms of both consciousness and gravity. Remember, what conventional scientists do not agree on is what causes charge collapse. I have answered that question, Planckfire.com. What they do agree is that charge collapse causes consciousness and gravity. So studying charge collapse is obviously very, very profound, and that is the nature of implosion, and that's the nature of Planck fire. So that's just a little background. So the conic sections, the pieces of that cone, determining the angles at which you could focus a vortex plasma field to cause it to implode, make an angel body, make an angel alphabet, make a stargate. You see, with the background principles will line up and we'll have some graphics. So this is the essential wave mechanic of Again, coherent longitudinal or scalar EMF interferometry, the centripetal point of which is where you inhabit the array. That's where the Stargate portal idea comes from. That's why mind is centripetal, and that is the physics of all action at a distance. It's the nature, the essence of portal stargates and teleportation. It's the nature of telepathy and clairvoyance, that coherent longitudinal interferometry. It's how song lines, dreaming tracks, dragon lines work. So we're saying that that compressional node where waves are able to agree because compression waves have arrived from potentially infinite directions at potentially infinite golden ratio multiples times the speed of light. That's how stargates work, is those waves arrive faster than the speed of light, but in a particular geometry, which is golden ratio times the speed of light, which is called a phase conjugate pump wave, and we're going to get to that. So looking at those cones, we're, we're just um, uh, uh, elucidating a little bit more on the conic sections here, referring to the famous work of Darlene, artist, uh, for, former partner, partner of Vincent Bridges, very famous. And these are Darlene's drawings in which she's connecting the idea of finding the conic angles in a conic section. And if you get those angles of those vortex in the right cookbook of symmetry, you make the kind of turning inside out recursive implosion that is a subject of everything we talk about, that, the negentropy of that implosion, key to stargates and mind. So it, actually, when we were looking here, um, uh, Teresa Burns in the map of the double vortex is referring to the fact that there is an L principle referred to repeatedly by John D. Um, and th that L we see here is actually uh, in more as in Elohim, for example, which is literally a 90 degree phase shift. And what is phase shifting 90 degrees? Here's the principle of L, right here. Here, on the left, incoming is a transverse electromagnetic wave. The electromagnetic inertia is going up and down perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. And then, when that wave goes down an implosive compression vortex called optimized translation of vorticity, and the angle down that vortex optimized by golden ratio, side view the caduceus of Hermes in physics called phase conjugation. So that path down that vortex then non-destructively compresses. Remember, Einstein's definition of gravity was infinite non-destructive compression. Well, that compression is non-destructive. We now know, now know how that compression can be non-destructive, which Einstein did not, because what we know now is at the center point of that vortex, the Planck threshold, the, the nose of the pine cone, that transverse inertia is spit out as a longitudinal or compressional wave on the right where the axis of uh, uh, cycles of compression are parallel to the direction of propagation of the magnetic wave. For example, the tsunami in the ocean is longitudinal. The tsunami, when it reaches shore up that cone, becomes transverse and kills you. <laughs> so the transverse, the longitudinal wave will go through about anything. So the, the fact that when you go down the right vortex, the right symmetry of that vortex, you translate that vorticity from the vertical up and down transverse component to the uh, longitudinal or scalar component on the right. That is literally an L or a phase shift. That's a, and that's the reason that's called Elohim. You see, is and this is in the more advanced material is that after 
you develop compression in your aura, access to bliss, access to stargates, access to sacred space, access to compression, then your DNA recursively braid implodes and compresses exactly what's needed for successful death or lucid dreaming, for example. And then the recursive implosive braiding of your DNA implodes and spits out that same longitudinal EMF, which is the stuff of lucid dreaming and soul and how you take memory through death. And that is measurable. This is not speculation. The university published harmonics triggering lucid dreaming exactly like therify.net, which replicably triggers lucid dreaming for many, is a golden ratio based harmonic series of implosion called a phase conjugate pump wave, which we are about to discuss. So that's the L or phase shift. And so someone who's called the L as in Elohim, maybe they were wannabes, but the real meaning of the L as in Elohim is those who can make the phase shift, which means those who have coherence, longitudinal coherence in their aura, Remember, that was called the Ba from the Khan. Egypt, Kezjan body by Gurdjieff, rainbow light body by, by the Tibetans. But electrical engineers now know what that is. That stuff, which is the only part of you which has any potential to become immortal, and therefore literally the physics of soul, is the coherence of the longitudinal field around your body, which is precisely how an aboriginal sits on that same longitudinal node and moves things down the song line. That longitudinal coherence literally inhabiting the array. So we're now going to give some examples of phase conjugate pump waves because that is the principle behind stargates and fire crystals and mind, literally a phase conjugate pump wave, uh, starting with the example of Hermes Thoth, the emerald tablets of Thoth. And looking down that golden spiral, we see that map to, uh, to that spiral down the cone, which I've animated as goldenmean.info slash grail, which is the sacred tablet of, right, right out of the glyph from Hermes, the sacred tablet of the Bon Po, making a bonfire, hint, flame in the mind. A bonfire is literally the ability to implode that charge into a wave, as we know, Ingo Swan famously lit a flame, a thermistor, with his mind at a distance through a Faraday cage, using the brainwave signature we now know is flameandmind.com, if you'd care to measure and learn. So that is the implosion, and that map to that grail actually is the origin of sacred space and stargates. Now, we're going to be playing with this metaphor from the movie Stargate. Remember uh, Rick Hassan, my partner, when I was co-inventing, uh, we co starting Gaia TV, had to help produce that movie Stargate. And the letters used actually to make the movie Stargate are the Ophane and Enochian alphabet, literally angel alphabet, for reasons we are about to discuss, because those are the angles of the plasma which enable that implosion fusion at the center, the definition of Stargate, because that's where compression becomes acceleration coherently. So everyone is out there building their damn star, stargates, just like the natives are running around holding that Coke bottle in the movie Gods Must Be Crazy. Look, the Coke bottle fell from heaven. We got to save it. So everyone's building, running around building stargates. But do they know what the Coke bottle, I mean, do they know what the stargate is? Hell no. That's a problem. Because if you don't understand the pr principle, you might as well be the natives running around with the Coke bottle. So the principle behind the core electrical engineering physics principle behind a stargate, we will learn, will reveal the physics of zero-point energy, of all action at a distance, and how your mind works, and why seeds germinate, because of the central pedal compression of a symmetrically arrayed longitudinal node. That is the physics of stargates, and that's how to make a seed germinate. That initiation of centripetal force by symmetrically arriving longitudinal compressional waves. So then we'd like to we'd like to tease our. <laughs> I like Freddie Silva. I think he's he's done amazing work. But he's running around pretending to teach what portals are and actually doesn't have a clue. Oops. And also Mike Ricksecker. I think he's a great guy doing wonderful work. But running around on Gaia TV trying to teach people what stargates are without having a clue to the electrical engineering, <laughs> this is not okay. This is a planet of woo-woos until somebody learns the electrical engineering. <laughs> Actually, um, 
You know, people like Mike Ricksecker, when they talk about how a Stargate works, they talk about Einstein and Einstein Rosenbridge. And they say the fact that you can connect to the action at a distance when you do what's called entanglement reflects the state of current physics on this planet about action at a distance. That state is pathetic, pathetic. Okay, actually, entanglement perfected is called phase conjugation. Phase conjugation is how you make coherent longitudinal nodes, and that enters the array called the coherent longitudinal EMF array, which is a far more precise, measurable, testable, teachable, and engineerable technical description of what a Stargate is than saying, oh, Einstein-Rosenbridge entanglement. That's crap. That's almost as ba bad as saying <laughs> that, that he knows what gravity is because it bends space and time. That is pure crap. You know, time is only a name for relative rotation rate, spin rate, nothing else. So to say that you've bent time is just pure woo-woo crap. And Einstein should be ashamed, ashamed of himself for saying bent space and time. That's pure crap. The only thing that's bent is the front of the wave as it approaches the centripetal center of a vortex. And that vortex is centripetal for a reason known only to those who have a clue why objects fall to the ground. And that leaves out Einstein, NASA, and Stephen Hawking. Sorry. That the reason that vortex is centripetal is because golden ratio fractality conjugation enables the adding and multiplying recursively of the phase velocities that turn compression only in golden geometry into acceleration towards center named the gravity. So we need a much better language than, oh, Einstein Rosenbridge entanglement. First of all, entanglement is just a name for the fact that at the center of fu a fusion event, for example, two electrons were in one. Uh, uh, optical fusion event, and then the electrons go in opposite direction, or the photons go in opposite direction, and you can measure the one photon is attached to the other photon faster than the speed of light. The reason the photons, this is called Bell's theorem, the reason the one photon is connected to the other one going the opposite direction faster than the speed of light is because the relationship at the center of the atom that burned to spit out those photons is longitudinal coherence and longitudinal interferometry is what made the connection. And that connection should be measurable precisely at golden ratio multiples times the speed of light. As Professor Raymond Chow, all of his famous measurements of faster than light velocities were between 1.5 and 1.7 times c, the speed of light. That is a smoking gun. That if you want to go faster than the speed of light, hello, you need golden ratio phase conjugation. And that is the key we're introducing to all action at a distance. Because the nodes in that longitudinal array visualize our star mother kit, then communicate by harmonic multiples times the speed of light. And the more mass in the vortex, <laughs> the, more, the farther that stargate goes. So here, just an example. If you wanted to walk to the sacred site and measure whether that sacred site is in fact going to be a stargator portal, here's how you measure it. Hello, you measure the weak electric magnetic field and determine if the harmonics are implosive, called a phase conjugate pump wave, and therefore centripetal, and therefore enable acceleration, called a portal. And that's all possible at flameandmind.com slash lifeforce. Our history of 30 years of work in that regard in measuring life force, goldenmean.info slash measuring life force. So the other part about the angle of these uh, sacred, let's see if I can get this moved down a little bit here. So the angle of these sacred alphabet letters, uh, when they converge at the center point, like the opposing letters of the alphabet making an implosion or fusion point, is a clue to how ancient alphabets were designed to enable those symmetries that initiate that fusion in the mind, flame in the mind. So for example, the, ancient, the famous film uh, uh, with the Jodie Foster contact uh, used a dodecahedron. Well, actually, they're conjugating opposing spin pairs into the superset of the cube, which is dodeca, and that dodeca enables that compression, and therefore that stargate, that portal. And we have a little animation about that here. Just So the reason it's a dodecahedron is because that electrical geometry allows this implosion, 
That golden ratio adding and multiplying of phase velocities and that implosion is what made the Stargate portal work. And initially, for Jodie Foster, it started as a lucid dream. Hint, clue. So, all zero-point <clears throat> action at a distance entanglement portal stargates require a phase conjugate pump wave. This is the visualized caduceus. This is the wave shape to initiate implosive, implosive recursive turning inside out, implosive compression. So the next slides are key examples of phase conjugate pump waves. The only way to build a stargate, <laughs> and, and the only way to build an Atlantean fire crystal toy stone, is you have to design the phase conjugate pump wave. Perfected, it's the equation Planckfire.com. So example of phase conjugate pump wave is the Schumann harmonics of the Earth which is how the pyramids work, the Hummer, to make global wireless power longitudinal array from the Schumann harmonics. That is the physics of pyramid. And that was Hermes' design. And that's important information. And the, of course, the spine liquid pump during bliss, your brain waves, and Therify.net. These are all examples of phase conjugate pump wave. So if you cannot make a well-designed phase conjugate pump wave, you definitely cannot build a stargate or fire crystal. Hint, Dan Willis. You know, I have worked with Elena Denon for many, well, quite a few years now, and I think she's fabulous, doing wonderful work as an ambassador. And I think her friend Dan Willis is a sweet guy, an electrical engineer, yeah, but does he understand a phase conjugate pump wave? No. Does he understand the principle behind Atlantean fire crystal? No. And this is a problem. We need to upgrade our physics, guys, here, or we're not a shareable wave. So this is the graphic of a perfected phase conjugate pump wave. You see how the double cones create that fusion geometry, which I then later proved by equation is specifically the geometry of how hydrogen is built. So you remember when we've said many times when Kepler was saying that platonic nests is the way you make solar system orbital mechanics and therefore Way, the way you make gravity, he was right because platonic nests creates golden ratio, that creates charge collapse, and charge collapse is stable gravity, so you need that array of nodes. And here's goldenmean.info slash kit, our star mother kit, also from, from Tufan Guven's geometricmodels.com.org. And so that is the archetype correct array of longitudinal nodes because it's there at those fractal nodes, the only possible 3D fractal, dodeci, cosa dodeca where the nodes exchange inertia between the longitudinal waves arriving from all fractal directions and the transverse wave exchange inertia only at the nodes, sometimes called the sacred sites. That's why the Earth grid is that geometry. So this is then behind what's called a phase conjugate magnetics, a concept I invented when I took Elizabeth Rauscher's magnetic harmonics, which in FDA trials, reduce pain dramatically. And I showed that the harmonic series of the magnetic signature was in fact a phase conjugate magnetic frequency signature based on Planck. And that then is the more correct low frequency magnetic field emitted by the bifiller Tesla coil, which is at the heart of therify.net. So the point we're making here is simple. The reason the golden mean ratio is the dominant geometry of all orbital mechanics is because that's the only way you can stabilize gravity and atmosphere. It is simple. If you don't initiate charge collapse, <laughs> you ain't made stable gravity, and therefore you haven't made stable atmosphere. So, you know, the, I think the cedar races, I love Elena's descriptions, the cedar races have done a fabulous job of spending millions of years designing that not only is the solar system all based on golden ratio, but the Schumann harmonic cascade is almost precisely golden ratio to Planck. How many million years of planning do you think that took? That's called cedar races. And we're going to look at that geometry. So this is, this is golden ratio times Planck harmonics here at this point in the, uh, HRV harmonics, I'm sorry, in the Schumann harmonics. So these are the actual Schumann harmonics over here on the left, uh, golden ratio times Planck. And these are the brainwave harmonics here, 7.29 up to 30 hertz, which create bliss in brainwaves, which you see on the right at flameandmind.com. And this is the alpha, beta, theta expressed in uh, cycles per 
minute versus cycles per second. And these, you see, are the same table showing the sacrocranial spine liquid pump harmonics, which also are a phase conjugate pump wave, which also are implosive, and also the key physics of bliss. And we're going to see in a minute also is how Jean-Charles Moyen replicably made teleportation uh, with witnesses that initiation to the physics of how a portal is created by creating that harmonic cascade in his brainwaves, and we're going to look at that. So this is a, a blow-up of that chart. So you see the phase conjugate pump wave, which is Schumann harmonics, brainwave harmonics, breath harmonics, heart rate, HRV harmonics, uh, sacrocranial harmonics, they're all simply the same. They are the same, golden ratio times Planck, phase conjugate pump wave. That implosion is the design of biology to be implosive, therefore centripetal, therefore psychoactive, therefore make a longitudinal node, therefore enabled lucid dreaming, and potentially teleport, as John Charles did. We'll look at his brain with. So here, just to look in more detail, this is more res here. So in red, you have the harmonics Planckfire.com, Planck times golden ratio multiples, and these are in red. Those are the harmonics from my equation only. Now, in green, you have this super well-documented sacrocranial pump tidal frequencies documented to be the physics of healthy spine liquid pump, healthy heart rate variability, and the only mechanism of kundalini and bliss. If your spine liquid is pumping, it's clinically impossible to be depressed, and the only way it works is here a low frequency phase conjugate pump wave. That is the most beautiful example of a phase conjugate pump wave. So hint, if you're building a stargate or a fire crystal and you don't know how this works, <laughs> you ain't competent. Sorry, that's my humble opinion. <laughs> okay, so there's, here's the, this, a closer look now. The equation, uh, my equation, golden ratio times time Planck, harmonics are in blue, 2.78, 4.5, 7.29, 11.8, and 19.09. That's the theoretical perfect phase conjugate pump wave from my equation, PlanckFire.com. On the bottom in green, I'm sorry, the print is small, the actual documented Schumann harmonics, very close. The Hummer pyramids hum these frequencies, 3, 7.83, 14.3, 20.8, and by the way, 53. And we go into great detail on, on that 53 hertz because the, the theoretical equation calls for 50 hertz, actually 49.98. Whereas the measured harmonics in all the sacred sites, 53 hertz, corresponds exactly to the difference between 7.29 theoretical versus 7.83 actual Schumann harmonics. That is a very important ratio because basically pure implosion charge collapse for Earth would require 7.29. But the Earth has been slightly tweaked. Uh, Hermes didn't get it quite right. It went a million years of planning for the seed races. The actual Schumann harmonic is 7.83. You take that ratio and you get the difference between 50, theoretically, and 53, what we measure at all the pyramids and sacred sites. So on Earth, you use the actual Schumann cascade instead of the theoretical, and they're very close. And we have just implemented that beautifully, thanks to Patrick Botti, in the newest version of flameandmind.com, the Flame and Sound app there, uh, which now runs on Macs as well as iOS, by the way. It's fabulous. And so you can actually play that corrected Schumann cascade. And by the way, hint, hint, do you want to build the right fire crystal? I think maybe you need to take a lesson here. The software is done, hint. <laughs> so so here's, here's the equation, Planck times golden ratio. And you've all seen this too many times. You predict the hydrogen ratio, ADP, the definition of all sacred dimension and orbital mechanics, Planck times golden ratio, all at PlanckFire.com. So the Schumann harmonics, hydrogen geometry, DNA geometry, uh, orbital mechanics, these are all based on perfected charge collapse, which is a phase conjugate pump wave. So we're going to get to that, then learning how to design the scrying cup for Nostradamus and learning how to design ancestor telephone calls in the uh, sacred obsidian mirrors of the Olmec. <laughs> it's all based on the same principle. It's so fun. So this is just drawing that out. You take those Schumann harmonics on the right and you get the measured brainwave harmonics of Bliss and Kundalini. I can make five of them and I'm working <laughs> on the gamma. <laughs> we'll get to that later.
So yeah, this is the this is the precedent we've spoken of this many, many times with thanks and acknowledgement to Jean Charles Moyen. Uh, but indeed, he was kind enough to measure his brain waves at our instruction, and indeed got dramatic high amplitude golden ratio here in blue, and octave harmonics here in pink, brainwave harmonics from alpha here in green, up to the top. Uh, harmonic here, which is the alpha, which in his case is right around 53 hertz, I believe. So very strong golden ratio and octave cascade from alpha to gamma. Very important. And as we're pointing out here, that in our work with kids learning to see without their eyes, it's the same harmonic cascade, alpha to gamma, golden ratio and octave cascade in brainwaves, which identifies the moment when kids begin to see without their eyes. Flameandmind.com slash outer vision. And those same kids frequently develop clairvoyance at the same time they learn to see without their eyes because that they, they, they get that fusion point. They see that vortex in their head coming to a point. They say, oh, I squeeze that vortex to a point. It becomes an eyeball. And now I can see without my eyes. Oh, by the way, I can also see my ancestors. The physics of clairvoyance is coherent longitudinal interferometry. So that brainwave cascade, which for John Charles Moyen made replicable, witnessed, teleportation possible is the smoking gun clue to how portals work. So what's happening is that that implosion cascade, and you need the gamma, the higher frequency around 50 hertz, because you need a higher frequency component to get the center point. Remember, the higher frequency is the shorter wavelength of the brainwave. And if you want to get focus into that center of the plasma vortex inside your head, you need that number of harmonics, alpha to, get to gamma, to get minimum leverage so you can steer the plasma vortex tornado inside your head and make it implode, which is the origin of vision, teleportation, and how stargates work. So here's, in my case, making five beautiful harmonics in golden ratio from delta, delta to beta, but oops, I'll show you later. I'm starting on the gamma. <laughs> I sent the pictures to, to Michael Sala. <laughs> He's very interested in the gamma too, because that's the turning point. So here's another example of a phase conjugate pump wave. This is how a phase conjugate pump wave looks. Notice it's a caduceus. In bottom here are the pre frequencies Antoine Priori used to heal thousands of cancers with the Priori device documented by the French government. And here's when I discovered the principle behind Antoine Priori. He didn't know what phase conjugation was, and he didn't know you needed opposing pairs, many problems. But then I perfected that principle, and these are the frequencies I use at Therify.net. Now functioning, doing rejuvenation, again, entropy in 25 countries, Therify.net, we're feeding that, in, that con complex cascade of harmonics, which, by the way, hint, hint, would you like to make a Stargate? Would you like to make a, a fire crystal? I think you're going to need to learn about that cascade, or you're not going to succeed. It's that simple. So phase conjugate pump waves accomplish implosive recursive turning inside out or compression. To visualize more about how that looks, that's a phase conjugate pump wave at work. That's the implosion. And in 3D, what we then call Planck fire, at the, the fire of Planck, you take Planck, multiply by golden ratio, you get a, a three-dimensional object that looks like that. That's implosion. That's Merkaba Ezekiel's wheels. That's the true fire crystal. That's the true... Uh, star mother. And so that makes the donuts turn inside out recursively and implode, and that sets the spiral in the vortex to do non-destructive self-re-entry, which many agree is the definition of consciousness. <laughs> but non-destructive self-re-entry is also the beginning of a stargate or a portal. And notice how that fits beautifully the physics of compassion, that the heart recursively turns inside out, implodes. The EKG that I discovered the definition and measurement, realheartcoherence.com. I discovered the word heart coherence because I discovered how to measure it, second order power spectra, called sepstrum. And the onset of that coherence in the EKG does this. Your heart turns inside out recursively and implodes. Is that a stargate or portal in your heart? What does compassion feel like? So this is, uh, you've all seen the slide. This is Tom Bearden, our friend who wrote Gravitobiology in which he showed by equation that it is a longitudinal EMF component of the electromagnetic wave, which is the stuff called gravity waves. 
And this makes, actually, it's self-evident even to a five-year-old. If you want to make the center of the plasma, the jelly <laughs> of an atom centripetal, in other words, if you would like to have gravity in an atom, <laughs> obviously, the, the arriving transverse wave, if, it, if the transverse wave hits the, se the, the center of an atom and it's going up and down, is that going to put the squeeze on? Hell no, no. The component of the electromagnetic wave that's arriving at the center of the atom that is going to put the squeeze on implosively, named gravity, is going to be the longitudinal EMF component. So once you understand that, anytime you can spit out longitudinal EMF directionally, sometimes incorrectly called the vril, the vril is only a child's name for directional coherent longitudinal EMF spit out of a vortex if you know how to make the cascade work and tr convert transverse to longitudinal. And that's all based on Tom Bearden's work. So this, another example, would be the raising of the Jed, the Jedi pillar, the Jed pillar, or if you would like to be a Jedi, you need to get that capacitive implo implosion going inside your body. Luke had to go deep underground into nature do you know why? So the Egyptian light bulb we now know was what they call raising a shem unto the Lord, which today is called therify.net. And actually, the shem, uh, Sitchin got part of that, right? It's a high word firestone because it's implosive capacitor. <laughs> and, and the shem field was, they, they were clear. We had to build the shem because we were aging catastrophically. So we made a time reversal field, which was incorrectly translated in the Bible. I made a shem unto the Lord. They said, I made an altar in the church. <laughs> you know, if there were five-year-olds, you could laugh at them. But if there's some physicists in the audience, don't call it a, sh a shem, an altar in the church. No, a shem is an implosive capacitor that triggers rejuvenation and therefore time reversal. And, and it, so let's stop being five-year-olds and use science because it, it would eliminate religion wars, I think, which would be very handy at this time, actually. So this is another example of a phase conjugate pump wave. And we thank Charlie Zies for the graphic here. The, the 76 degree tip of Russian pyramid and base of Egyptian pyramids is there because the pyramid had to be piezoelectrically a phase conjugate pump wave in order to implode the, implode the Schumann harmonic cascade, in order to pump out a coherent longitudinal vector at the base, which is how global wireless power was made. That's why it's called the Hummer, and people don't understand that don't deserve to have global wireless power. Don't complain that your government prevented you from having global wireless power. Learn how it works for yourself. That's my suggestion. <clears throat> so then I just wanted to use the example to illustrate how <clears throat> the looking glass time mirrors work and how the Olmec obsidian mirror for ancestor phone calls work. An example is to be the secret uh, phase conjugate dielectric coating, dark coating, on the bottom of Nostradamus's scrying cup. So by making the, ref the reflective surface literally a phase conjugate mirror, you suddenly have a, t a time mirror, the looking glass portal. It's well described, Andrew Basiago, etc. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why we had to get the angle of these donuts perfectly embedded and nested B. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We had to get the angle of our vortex correct so we could implode them at center so we could conjugate and create neg entropy, time reversal, psychokinesis. And if you just remove the donut and leave only that spiral, it's a golden spiral. <clears throat> And you just consume the perspective, change your point of view. Very useful. <laughs> it's called consumed perspective, e pluribus unum, from many ones. So you realize that what you've been calling different faces, <laughs> different viewpoints on the elephant, suddenly you consume the perspective. And note that each of those letters, you could zoom in forever in each letter. So that means that you'd... 
Each letter like the S is a recursive. Each letter like the S is a recursive. Each, Each letter, letter like the S is a recursive. recursive. <laughs> so, but we're just saying that the, the index um, to this ability to zoom in between fields, the ability to zoom in forever called fractality is merely an in, in introduction to the actual physics of non-destructive charge compression or charge collapse, which is the answer to everything. <laughs> charge collapse is the solution to alchemy. It's the solution to lucid dreaming and going through death. Charge collapse is the solution to zero-point energy. Charge collapse is, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, and so that if you take this, the <clears throat> symmetry views of the alphabet in sequence, you have, for example, the word he, uh, Hebrew, first word of Genesis called Breshith, which means at first, in principle, the origin of thingness, which is the sequence of turns of mind necessary to turn inside out on the surface of a torus. And I call this Ray's trace. <laughs> and so if you animate that turning inside out, which you've seen that animation. Let me see this. I thought that would play. Here it comes. <laughs> it's a little slow. And so this was... Um, some of the early animations we did on alphabet. I didn't want to go through all the alphabets. But you see the, why it's called the glass bead game. It's literally about glass beads. And you can also see in 3D where the capital letters are double symmetry elements of the small letters, uh, literally the perfect valentine. And so when this recursive braiding is successful in the DNA, that's when you get the implosion fusion. You make the L, you get longitudinal coherence, I'm not going to do all these animations. I didn't really mean to put all these slides in here. Um, but so notice that the, uh, as we mentioned, the tag in or crownlet top left, which were used to indicate the position of the three of the Hebrew letter with respect to the tetra cube, the three axes, tag in or crownlet, is replaced with the same letters by a vertical and horizontal bar indicating your relative position with respect to the cube of space in Sanskrit. And remember, the tetra cube is how you start phase conjugation. It's called four wave mixing. And the Ophanum Enochian alphabet, as we see, we'll see elsewhere, was shadows of the various slices through the vortex. In other words, how to nest the slices of the vortex to make a hypercube. And that implosion is how you make intelligent plasma entities like That's interstellar angel bodies. And, and notice that there are, in fact, seven spins outside and five spins inside, which was the sigil of truth for the Ophanum Enochian. There's the five spins inside. And so that's what became the sigil of truth. So taking that to the biggest big picture, as Elena, I think, very usefully described, that the Orion Wars were fought essentially over access to the largest stargate in our galaxy, the trapezium in Orion. Now, it's very instructive to think about why you could build the most powerful stargate in our galaxy, the one with that, that is kick butt and can go farthest. Uh, and we like to take a, a short bit of pride in enjoying Elena Danan's description that the, as I predicted over 20 years ago, that the Earth would be the vaccine for the Orion Wars. <laughs> Hello, they took the three grays, tall grays, who tricked Eisenhower and MJ-12 into allowing millions of abductions. They took those same three tall grays when the Federation got here, and they inserted a virus into the hive queen of Orion, literally the Nebu, and took out the entire Orion Empire. That's the vaccine that came from Earth. We are the vaccine to the Orion Wars. I just think I like this story. <laughs> Anywho, so the, so the, so the grays are kind of out over there. But the Stargate, ooh. So the trapezium is literally a cube. It's a square. And if you arrange masses correctly in a large cube, those masses can make the biggest Stargate in the galaxy because you get the largest number of golden ratio harmonics conjugating to center. Hello, that's how you make big stargates. It's about arranging masses tetracubically, exactly as you would set up lasers to start a phase conjugate mirror. It's called four-wave mixing. So this is the old story that Orion series played is with respect to the solar system. Is it a 60-degree light cone? The Hopis called it Peshmate in the Way of the Nine. I made a beautiful film with Elena Danan about the Way of the Nine and how the Nine became the 
the, the cedar races. And it was wonderful. And that film has gone viral. It's wonderful. But these films, I made about seven of them now with Elena Danan, are both on her YouTube channel and mine. So this became a gravity lens. And to understand how a gravity lens is the subject of today's conversation, actually. That that lensing effect is literally that centripetal force you generate by the vortex of double light cones. For example, here's the ancient Japanese woodcut of the geometry of the Orion Stargate, and you see Betelgeuse uh, Alnalaya Mintaka. Uh, that is actually a double double cone. The ancient the ancient Japanese knew that Orion was called a double cone. Actually, and they had a name for that double cone. It was, it was called Yah and Va Yod Hey Va. It was called Yahweh, which was a name for double cone. It doesn't mean Enlil was a Yahweh. No, it means he was a wannabe. But a, wan a Yahweh is actually a title for the ability to inhabit a double cone. A Yod Hey Va Hey. Uh, one vortex, yod, hey, amorphous in space filling, va, the vortex goes the other way. And remember, the point here is that the religion wars on this planet at this time would not exist if, in fact, Yen Enlil Yahweh did not have a Draco for a mother. And Elena does a great job of teaching about that, really great job. And so by inviting all the Draco parasites in the solar system, because Enlil ran the joint for a long time until the, the Federation kind of finally put him in jail. But if the, if the Jewish religion would go back and figure out who Yahweh was and why there's so much poison in the ancestry, like chosen race and all this other <clears throat> quote-unquote crap, it's because this is classic Draco. Oops! And I, I want to pick on all religions equally here, however. Uh, you know, the, the Islamic religion, the, religions are obsolete. That's the short summary. They're obsolete the day you learn the physics of how you get a soul. Then religion is suddenly became more beautiful, more romantic, and eliminates all personality worship, all miracle worship, and all religion wars are gone on the day that we learn the true, pure principle behind spirituality. Here we're just documented, just like in the Vimana Nazi bell, when the mercury vortex made voltage from gravity, the narrow point is where you, uh, you uh, take out the voltage. Actually, it, the narrow point is the positive field, that's centripetal, and the widest point, and remember the vortex has to be piezo, they use rock powder. And so if you apply this principle to a mercury vortex and the uh, mercury actually is at the right angle, and they actually use a um, an iron powder to make it red, so that it's magnetically flux permissive in addition to to powerfully uh, high specific gravity. So you make more gravity by spitting out more longitudinal directionally from the correctly tuned mercury vortex. This was the Mana Nazi Bell. We've talked about these things many times. You've seen these stories. And so then we actually did the experiment. If you wind the coils and make a vortex, you can spit out a small component of longitudinal EMF. And here's where I'd like to laugh <laughs> at current <laughs> electrogravitics. So everybody's standing around wondering why the EM drive, electromotive drive, here's the picture top right. How does it make gravity? Well, it's very simple. You've got microwave in a, it's a, a trapezoid, but it's actually approximating a caduceus, which could be tuned correctly, hint, plonkfire.com, to optimize the amount of gravity you make after you understand why objects fall to the ground. So while the builders of these, this thing do not know why, why objects fall to the ground, they don't deserve to make gravity correctly. They need to learn why objects fall to the ground, then they can be taught how to optimize the amount of gravity the EM drive works. So you take the microwave frequency signature, you make it a phase conscious compound wave. It's very, very, very simple. So uh, we have too many animations here, but it had to do with the fact that the, uh, the plane of the solar system would nutate and precess. So you get the plane of the Earth, the plane of the solar system, and the plane of the galaxy. And the relative angle of those planes of rotation, when they make the 90 degree erection of the Holy Cross, credit Nick Fiorenza here, uh, that you have what's called the photon wave or the, the, the galactic uh, uh, zero point event. It's literally a turning point for the evolution of Earth when interstellar longitudinal waves, waves 
converge here in a perpendicular way, they create initiatory events over thousands of years. So this was a, a picture, this was only an approximate picture of, of the craft there that Elena and others uh, actually, um, we might want to credit uh, Tony Rodriguez here, who's done some wonderful work with us. We interviewed him many times, it's wonderful. So the lithium niobate type crystal, which was the dilithium crystals in, in Star Trek, um, you, you need a phase conjugate pump wave. And that's being administered here in a way that the mechanical vibrations can be initiated in the crystal without damping the vibration. And that is key to how to build a fire crystal, a toy stone. And uh, the most practical example in the literature for a fire crystal is the Kosky Frost crystal, made 800% its own weight and gra gravity and used a phase conjugate pump wave. So I'm urging the people uh, who would like to understand the fire crystal to study the paper at fractalfield.com slash propulsion. And this book is by Elizabeth Donovan, Bill, formerly Bill Donovan. It's called Glimpses of Epiphany. There's a whole book about the uh, Kosky Frost crystal, which used a phase conjugate pump wave and made 800 times its own weight in gravity. And how it works can be illustrated by Marcel Vogel's crystals, actually. Uh, now, Marcel, uh, you know, I knew him for many years, I think maybe before Dan Willis, I'm not sure. But, um, and I interviewed him carefully as I sponsored his lecture at Psychotronics and elsewhere. And uh, Marcel Vogel, um, he had some hygiene problems. I don't want to pick on the guy. I'm sure he made wonderful contributions. But he did not know how to align a facet plane with the molecular plane, which obviously you take the Z axis, the long axis, which is called birefringent. It rotates the plane of polarized light. And that tells you which axis of the crystal is pointing where. And once you know the birefringent axis, which was the physics of the Rife microscope, by the way, you could use shadow microscopy between the two planes of, of polarized light coherence in the birefringent axis of quartz. That's how Rife disobeyed the law of physics that says you can't look at anything smaller than the wave with which you look. <laughs> Rife disobeyed the law because he used the, the shadow of the two planes of polarity of light up the z-axis of quartz. I, I was involved in the optics on that just because of my friends at University of Rochester, Parker Givens, um, who uh, were studying the optics of the Rife microscope, actually. Anyway, the point is that the z-axis of the quartz crystal can then be vibrated with a phase conjugate pump wave. And ideally, actually, I know that uh, Marcel was approximating conjugation by not making the sides of the quartz crystal parallel, but actually for tuned phase conjugation, you need the sides absolutely par paralyzed, parallel, and you need the molecular planes par parallel to the facet planes. And then you could introduce a phase conjugate pump wave and optimize what Casey called the toy stone, what was called the Atlantean fire crystal. And I'm suggesting that people who would like to learn that physics need to study how the phase conjugate pump wave worked in the Kosky Frost crystal. And the book, thanks to Elizabeth Donovan, is at fractalfield.com slash propulsion. And another way of thinking about this perhaps more gently is, um, you know, the unobtainium and avatar why it was floating. Well, it was floating for the same reason that uh, famous Grabenikov's cavity structure effect. So basically, he walked over a hill that was stuffed with insect skeletons. And ideally, insect skeletons develop super dielectric capacitors, which means they float. They make gravity. If a super dielectric in the right thin film plane uh, will create a longitudinal component, actually. And so that's the f physics of the cavity structure effect, which described in the medical literature from the super dielectrics of the hive uh, uh, material, the material of, of insect skeletons. And that's all at goldenmean.info slash gravity politics. But that's an example of using super dielectrics actually to create gravity. Now, another example, very practical, is that if you take a piezoelectric vortex, in this case, theimploder.com, if your water is a little bit hard, and you arrange that vortex in the exact angle called Schauberger's dream, theimploders.com, the piezoelectric vortex will then become implosive at the center point and create a longitudinal component, centripetal, negentropic, and we're doing this commercially for agricultural around the world, and we create hypersolubility for people. You know that uh, solubility issues, hydration, is the issue behind many diseases. So this is another example of a phase conjugate pump wave. Okay, now I'm going to uh, make this a little bit bigger here. 
Let's see if we have a clothing, closing thought. Just to say that those who would like to know how stargates, portals, and wormholes work should study the brain waves from Jean Charles at the moment he teleports with witnesses replicably a golden ratio cascade, alpha to gamma, called a phase conjugate pump wave. And that creates an implosion to center at the center of a vortex where you couple with the ever more dense node of a longitudinal array in which distribution is possible. Another example, we didn't do it today, but we, we have done this slides many times, that the Heinrich Cluve sequence of geometries you will see at the moment of death, lattice, cobweb, tunnel, spiral, is the implosion required to die successfully because you do not get a permit into ancestor memory, collective unconscious, communion of saints, unless you do that compression. And by the way, anger does not compress well. Hello. <laughs> so when you compress, you enter that array, and that's distribution, sometimes called heaven, plains of Sharon, Shams elysees So perfected distribution is the array of longitudinal nodes, and it's more than the collective unconscious. You know, ancestor memory is aboriginal name for God, for a reason. And this, for the same compression series that enables you to lucid dream, enables you to begin to enter that array coherently. And Jodie Foster, it started with a lucid dream and then it was a stargate, hello. <laughs> As you get more dense, hint, hint, you get more dense in a lucid dream when you look at your hand because that becomes recursive and the spiral implodes. And then your lucid dream becomes more lucid. <laughs> you get more leverage on the array. So what we wanted to say was, it's time for the woo-woos to stop talking about stargates and portals using no physics. This is not okay. If you don't want to be a woo-woo, then you need to have serious electrical knowledge when you talk about stargates and portals and lucid dreaming. And so my purpose here was not to tell you how to build zero-point energy. Yes, this is, the, this is the, the principle. However, there are more details. My purpose here was to show you that if you understand the principle behind stargates and portals and teleporting, then you can understand zero-point energy, vacuum energy, action at a distance, and how your mind works. Because you're constantly touching in to the center of that array if you have focus. And that's what Elena Denon very usefully refers to, go inside and hear your inner voice. Well, actually, the inner voice is the nodes of that array, the ancestor memory speaking to you if you get peaceful, if you have access to sacred space, if you have access to the Schumann harmonics, if you have the access to the kind of hygiene requires. In fact, required. In fact, if you understood what pure intention is, which is literally a shareable wave. So on that note, <laughs> Dan Winter out. I hope you enjoyed. I hope to share with you more. It's a privilege to, to try to serve your sincere interest in the pure principles of spirituality. Thank you very much.